10th of January, my 25th birthday. Special day, of course, but this was extra special because I had just landed my dream job and it was my first day. I became a management consultant in this hugely prestigious management consulting company. I had my suit on. I was given American Express, which was a huge thing. And, you know, most of the nights I worked until 11. But that didn't bother me at all. I was so eager to show that, you know, the talent I had. But the problem became evident when I had one of the first performance reviews with my boss. There she said that, Camilla, you know, your performance at work is good. You know, no problem with that. But you are too excited. Now I wonder, that am I alone with this? Or has any other you felt this way at work, that you are too much of something? Raise of hands. Yeah, there are some of you too. And how many of you can really show your true colors, can really be your best authentic selves at work? Raise of hands. Yeah, some of you. Lucky you. I didn't have that courage. Instead, in the evening, I drew to my notebook pictures with me closing my mouth with a zipper or pictures like this, me putting this kind of armor on. Armor that would protect me against maybe nasty comments that others might have, but most of all, it would keep inside the true self that I was. You know, the excitement that was a problem. Can you see the problem with this strategy? It's already evident in the picture. Inside of the armor also stayed the best parts of being a human. My joy, my gratefulness, my excitement, which ended up being a good thing. All these things that really, you know, make life worth living. And Brené Brown summarizes this problem perfectly. She says that we cannot selectively numb emotions. And if we numb these negative emotions, these painful ones, we will also numb the positive ones. So we can each ask ourselves that are we willing to do it? But this is also a problem for companies. I noticed it one time when I had a meeting with my colleague. And, you know, there was a beautiful sea view and everything was going great. And he said to me that, Camilla, we have to come up with an idea to a, to a client. And I was like, oh, yes, I have an idea. This is a wild one. But then I had this strong no. No, I don't want to say it. Why? Because last time I told him my idea, he rolled his eyes a bit, just, just a little gesture. But that made me feel so bad. I was like embarrassed. And I, I, I was thinking there that why should I you know, risk it? I can just go with this basic idea. Why risk it? And again, I'm sure you can see the problem here. What if... All of our people start to behave like this. All of our people start to withhold their ideas. How can we grow as a company? How can we innovate if our people are silent? And this is also what Ed Catmull talks about. He's one of the founders of Pixar. He talks that, you know, the first ideas for their movies, they are bad in the beginning. He says that you think that they are great, but they are not. But his job as a leader is to protect these courageous people who dare to say out loud these ideas, these crappy first ideas. And what if our people start to behave like this when they see problems? What if they don't tell about them? And these small problems that might be easily solved escalate into these huge problems because we don't do anything about them in time. 
you know, what happened to Nokia mobile phones. I'm sure you have heard about it. When INSEAD and Aalto researched and wanted to find out that what happened to them? How can they lose such a world dominance in mobile phones? They concluded that Nokia collapsed because of fear. Fear that prevented the middle managers from telling the truth to the top management, who then make, made wrong strategic choices. So silence doesn't necessarily mean that people are agreeing. They might be afraid. But what can we do? What, how, how can we create situations where this kind of behavior doesn't grow? How can we create environments where it's okay to say out loud the ideas and the problems? I have good news. We can do it by teaching everyone how to understand and lead emotions. And by knowing how to do these things, we also learn how to have the courage to speak out, but we also, every one of us, need the skills to receive. So we need both of these things. And then we can skip the numbing part. We, we don't have to stay in the gray area where it's, yes, it's safe with the basic ideas, but there's no growth. And by learning how to handle these negative emotions, we can open the doors for the positive ones. Just like Brené said. I give you now three simple, but I must admit, quite hard things you can do. And the first step is, unfortunately, that you have to turn the finger on yourself. Not blaming others, but really becoming aware that, okay, how am I behaving? I am, am I the one who's rolling the eyes? How am I taking on when people tell ideas? And this is really important because if we want to create environment when there is trust and safety to say these things, we have to be trustworthy ourselves first because the truth will come out anyway. Even though we think that, okay, I'm not saying what I really think. You know, scientists say, say that over 90% of our communications is something else than words. So it's not really trustworthy if your words are saying something and your other communication something else. And also, I'm so excited that in the future, it's more allowed to actually be you. Because many of you must know that, you know, we are going to get a lot of help from artificial intelligence and smart robotics with this linear logical stuff. They are, you know, much better at remembering things. And then there is a pressure and also opportunity for us humans to move towards these maybe more difficult things, complex things. Things like understanding social rules. They are not linear. Understanding emotions, not linear. You know, combining strange things, listening to weak signals. These are all still quite difficult to put into the algorithms. And also, it's, in the future, it's interesting to know that what are you thinking? What is your perspective? Your unique way of seeing things, your personality com combined with your interests and experiences, that is something unique. So in the future, it's more allowed to really show your true colors. So in this first step, I dare you to be more vulnerable. Really show yourself that who you really are and try to be your best authentic self. And when you have learned to become more aware and really stopping the autopilot, then take a courageous look at what you feel. And when I say that, you know, be your best authentic self, I'm not saying be unfiltered self. Because 
it's not leading of emotions if you're thinking that, okay, I can show my emotions so I can behave any way I want. No, that's swimming in the emotions. But neither is leading of emotions this numbing. That I don't feel anything, I don't show anything, so I must be leading my emotions. No, you are then blocking everything away and maybe creating this time bomb inside of yourself, just waiting to explode. But what are the emotions here for then? And this is maybe the most interesting thing, at least for me, that emotions are here to tell us information. Yes, they are scanning the environment all the time, bringing us information and having correlation with our own system, they make us feel something. It's like our own computer inside of us, telling us information. Everyone else can feel something else, but you are feeling something. Be curious. What is it saying? And don't worry. You don't have to listen to just emotions. You can still listen to facts and rational things, but you can also start to listen to this emotion channel. What can I learn? So my hope for you in this next step is to be more detailed in what you feel. It's not enough to say that I feel bad, even though it's a good start, but instead try to say that I feel sad, I feel frustrated, I feel I'm envious, because these are all different emotions and they are trying to tell us different things. And this naming of emotions is really important skill in two ways. First of all, naming of emotions is one of the key components in emotional intelligence. And emotional intelligence, it's really positively linked with good work performance. And the second thing is that actually naming your emotions will calm your brain down. Yes, brain researchers have been able to prove that you know, they can see from brain scans that when individuals can name the emotions, the, the emotional brain areas calm down. So name your emotions to tame them, as Dan Siegel says. And the last thing is to take action. Lead your emotions by taking, taking action. And I'm sorry to say that <laughs> I cannot give you a magic wand, you know, magic wand that, you know, will fix all of your emotion-related re problems or even quick fix. But I have something be better. You can change your emotions in an instance like this. I'll give you a few examples. For example, if you're slouching now or if you're walking and slouching and you change your posture to upright, you are changing your hormones. This is what, for example, Amy Cuddy has been able to prove that, that having this kind of power poses, you are affecting your hormone levels. Another example is the one that I mentioned in the beginning, that it only takes maybe one expression in the meeting, like this. And I'm maybe changing your emotions or at least affecting them. Or maybe in the evening, you become aware that oh, I feel anxious, oh, I feel bad, what am I doing? Uh, I'm looking at my emails, it's 8 p.m. Maybe you change your habits then. Maybe you decide that now on, I won't look at my emails after 6 p.m. That will have effect on your emotions, maybe your sleep and emotions of people around you. And when individuals start to work like this, you know, stopping the autopilot, becoming aware, understanding what they are feeling, making small changes, when people like this meet, they are going to be more authentic. They are going to create more trust and safety. And in that kind of environment, there are no need 
to hide the problems and the ideas can flourish. Thank you.